Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's all find the winner of the circular game. And just in case you're wondering why do I have this part in light theme, it's because the picture is kind of hard to see on the dark theme, so sorry about that. So we're playing a game where we have five people sitting in a circle. The people are numbered from one through five in order. And the idea is we're given an integer k. In this example, it's two. So we start at this person. We start at one always. We travel a distance of k minus one, and we eliminate the person at k minus one. And then after that person has been eliminated, we are then at the next person. So kind of like you can see here on the second part, just making it a little bit bigger. But here you can then see we have this many people remaining. And so remember, we were at this spot when we left off. So again, we travel a distance of k minus one, and then land here, eliminate that person. So we get a circle that looks like this. And we kind of just keep going until only a single person is remaining. In this case, that person was three. And then we return them. I think the easiest approach is a simulation, right? We could do it with like an array, for example. If we have an array, we could try something like this. We're at position i, we do k minus one, we add that to whatever position we're in, like index wise within that array. And then in that array, we eliminate the element that is in that position. Obviously, that's a linear time operation, but it does technically work. If we eliminate that, then let's say we're at the next position here and we do the same thing, move K spots. So we're here, delete it. Then we're going to be here and we're going to kind of go in a circle just in case you're wondering how that would work. Keep in mind that this is the array, but the positions of each element are going to look like this. These are the indices. So if we were here, like at index four, we add to that k minus one, suppose in this example, it's going to be one. So we're at position five. Obviously, that's out of bounds, but we can take this mod it by the size of the array. Keep in mind, the size of the array is changing. We're eliminating elements from the middle of the array. It's changing. So right now there's actually uh, only three elements in the array, but I guess I already started like this, like this is the entire array. So just kind of assume that we actually had a full array just for the math to work out. So we would take five, mod it by the length of the array, which is in this case four, assuming we haven't deleted these guys yet. So we do something five modded four, we'd get, whoops, I guess I messed up. The length of the array is five, sorry. So we'd actually get zero. And so that would basically tell us that from here, if we take that many jumps, we're gonna end up back at this position. So that's how we can handle like the circular part of it. Now I'm not gonna code this solution up because there is a better way. I'll quickly go through the rest of the simulation because it can help you build intuition. So like if we were here, then we'd end up here. We'd delete this element. So we'd go to the next available element. We're here. We jump however many spots. We're going to be here. We delete that. We have one element remaining in the array. We return that element. Now, this is clearly an n squared solution. We're going to do n minus one eliminations and an elimination could be like times n, the size of the array. So n squared time complexity and O of n space complexity. Now there is a better solution and I'll try to give you a little bit of the intuition. Take a look at this diagram over here. Is it really true that this arrow over here is moving by, you know, however many spots? But I think if Einstein were alive today, he would argue that everything is relative so maybe it's actually true that the circle is the one that's moving in counterclockwise direction instead of the arrow moving in a clockwise direction. And whoever that arrow lands on is the person that we eliminate. Using that logic, let me show you how we can more efficiently solve the problem. So we start at the first person, right? Then we would take this array and sort of shift it, right? But we know in reality, this is actually a circle. So what would we actually do in terms of code? Well, we'd kind of do something like this, remove this guy, but keep it here and move it to the other side. So, you know, the circle version of this is obviously on the right side, but we've just kind of rearranged the order of these. And we did it in such a way where we remove from one end, removing from that end is constant. Adding to the other end is also constant, but this is completely equivalent to what we did on the right side and equivalent to what we did on the array. Now, the way I'm going to draw this, like in reality, what we're doing here is a shifting this whole array. This is how I'll be drawing it. Now, in addition, we landed on this person after however many shifts. 
and now we can remove this person so basically we do the same thing we did we pop but this time we don't add it to the end here so this is what our new array would look like and I know I said I wasn't going to shift the arrow, but I think at this point it would probably just be easier to read this if I did. So I guess I'm a liar, but I think it'll be easier to explain this way. So now we're going to be at this person. We're going to shift, but I guess a better way to think of it would be we're going to pop and we're going to pop this time, not K minus one times. We're actually going to pop K times. We're going to pop first K minus one times. And those first K minus ones are going to be popped, but then they're going to automatically be pushed to the end. But the last one, the Kth element, that's the one that's actually going to be removed. So the simulation is going to work like this. And at this point, you might be able to tell that the data structure we're going to use for this is going to be a double ended Q, AKA a deck. I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced. So pop three, append three, and four is the kth element, pop it. Now we're here, pop five, append five, pop one, and don't append it. And now we're nearly done. We're at three, pop three, append three, and then lastly pop five, and then we'll have three as the result. So this way we can solve the problem slightly more efficiently. It's actually not going to be linear time. Do you know why? Because first of all, it's going to take n iterations to eliminate all like the elements that we want to eliminate. And every time for us to eliminate an element, we do still have to pop K times. So the time complexity this time is gonna be N times K. Space complexity is still gonna be big O of N. Let's code this up. So I'm gonna initialize a Q, a double ended Q here. Then I'm going to initialize it with the elements that we want. Let's say one through N. So I'm gonna do N plus one here, and then I'm gonna append to it that element. And then while the length of the Q is greater than one, we're gonna basically do the simulation. Now, an alternative thing you could do here is do something like for i in range n minus one, because we know that's how many times we're gonna pop k elements. But I think it's more readable to say while the length is greater than one, because once the length is equal to one, we know exactly what the return statement is gonna be. The length of the queue is one, so the remaining element is gonna be at index zero, and then we return that element. But until then, we run the simulation. So right now we want to pop k times. But the first k minus one times are going to be different. K minus one, we're going to pop from the queue from the beginning of it. So the left side, and we're going to get an element. I'm going to call it num. And then we're going to take that number and append it to the end of the queue. So we pop k minus one times, but we add them to the end of the queue. And then the kth time that we pop, we do not re-add that element. This is the element that we're deleting. This is the person that's no longer going to be in the queue. Um, to make this slightly more readable, I guess you could take this and we don't really need this variable. So we can actually just cut this and move it here and then get rid of this line. So this is the entire code for the queue. Let's run it. You can see it works and it is efficient, but there actually is a better approach and it's really interesting. It's probably going to blow your mind. So obviously, if we want to improve our approach, we have to stop with the simulation. That's the costly part. We have N and K. But with our Q solution, we are literally taking elements and then moving them to the end. Is it possible for us to eliminate a single person in constant time rather than one by one taking each element, moving to the end and then eliminating an element? Well, let's try that. Let's go back to the idea of an array for a second. Suppose we're at the beginning. We do the simulation. And, you know, we land at this spot after like the K addition. We do that calculation by starting at index zero, add K minus one. We land at this position and then we want to do an elimination. Now, obviously, we don't want to literally remove this element from the middle of the array because that's O of N. How can we kind of remove it and also maintain the relative order of these guys? Like, obviously, this is now going to be on the other side. One is now going to be over here. So how can we kind of maintain that and then, you know, shift this over here? Well, I'm not going to lie. This is really unintuitive, but let's consider this array. We kind of rebranded the index of all of these, right? This portion of the array, the indexes were two, three, four, and this one was at the beginning, but now we've kind of created a new array where now the indexes are zero here, one here, two here, and three here. So we will say, we sure, we're, we're still at zero. We're still at the beginning of this list or queue or whatever you want to call it at this point. But if we wanted to map 
this index to the original index that the element started at, what would we do? Well, all we would do is add k to it plus k right because that's how much we shifted by so of course that's where we would land and that's doing it just one time watch what happens when we do it twice i'm going to take this i'm going to shift it this is the element that we end up removing four we take three and add it to the end so it's over here now now obviously we didn't literally do those operations we know those are expensive operations i'm just doing this for visual purposes but now my pointer is over here i'm at five but again, we rebranded the indexes, didn't we? Now, the new index actually of five is zero. One is at index one, three is at index two. So if I want the mapping of, okay, I'm at index zero, but five actually started at index four. So we did the plus K once, now we kind of want to do plus K twice. So I'm going to keep drawing this. And while I think this does serve as intuition for the solution I'm gonna show you, please don't feel bad if you don't come up with it by yourself because it's kind of insane. So once again, we're gonna remove five, add it to the end. We're gonna land on one. This is the element we actually remove. And now once again, we rebranded the indexes. This is at index zero, this is at index one. Lastly, one more time, remove this, add it to the end here, remove it too. And now, finally, we rebrand this guy and we're here. So if you kind of want to see what we're doing, this might start to make sense to you. You might notice a pattern. You might notice that this is something of a sub problem. We can solve this recursively. Watch this. This was the original array. We rebranded here, here, and here. And finally, we got to zero. That was always going to be the base case because we're always going to end with an array of length one. So how do we now, though, get the actual result? Like, what value is this? Because remember, we weren't doing any of this. We weren't literally doing this. How can I now take this zero and tell me the position that the three started at? It started at two. So I'm going to do what I said earlier. From here, remember, we took this zero and we would add k to it to tell us that at the previous step this was actually at index two so we can do the same thing here we can ask ourselves at the previous step at the purple step what index was this three actually at it was at index zero once again how can we make that calculation well i'm gonna say this k is two i'm gonna say add two to this guy it's Two. So you're telling me in an array of size two that this three was at position two? That's out of bounds. So what do we do? Well, remember what I said towards the beginning of this video, mod by the length of the array. Take two, mod it by the length of the array. Zero. Oh, three was actually at position zero in the array of size two. Okay, cool. So now let's take it a step further. Two, we know that three was at two in an array of size three, but where was three? when we had four elements. I mean, here we can see it was at position zero, but how do we make that calculation? Well, once again, we kind of keep going backwards. Now we're gonna add two again. We're gonna add that K value, it was two. And then we're gonna mod, because this gives us four. It tells us we were at index four in an array of size four. That doesn't make any sense. Mod it by four, we get zero. Oh, well, look at that. It's at index zero, that's true. And lastly, we go back to the first step by taking this add two to it and mod by the length of that array which was five at that point so we would get two and yeah okay so we're at two is that the result no because remember we were keeping track of the index so for us to get the value from the index in the original input is pretty easy all you do is plus one right so that is the solution and we're going to solve this recursively. The good thing is the code is actually relatively easy, but let's not kid ourselves. This stuff is not intuitive. So like I said, I'm going to do this recursively. I'm going to keep track of two variables because remember how we were kind of going from a problem to the sub problem? Well, even though we're not going to keep track of the entire array, we are going to keep track of how many elements we have because as you saw in the simulation I just ran, we will definitely be needing this because we're going to be needing to mod by this. And we're also going to be needing it for the base case, of course. So I guess I'll start with the base case. If n is equal to 1, we return 0 because if we have an array of length 1, the value in it must be at index 0. We're also going to keep track of k. Well, k isn't really going to change. Then down here, the formula is going to become something like this. 
call helper. We'll have fewer elements remaining. We'll have one fewer element remaining. We deleted it. We don't care which element we deleted because we have now a smarter way to keep track of which position we're always at. So we'll pass in a K here. And to this, to the result of this, we're going to add K to get the index because this will tell us the original index of the element remaining. And then we want to make sure that it's in bounds. So we will take this and mod it by n so this is what we're going to return and this is luckily the entire code obviously it's not easy to come up with is it but down here we'll just go ahead and call the helper function passing in n passing in k and don't forget the plus one right at the end so finally let's run this you can see it works it's much more efficient and that's because as you can kind of tell the overall time complexity of this is going to be o of n because n is like the base case when it reaches one we're decrementing it by one each time but the downside is this is going to take additional space because this is a recursive solution. Now, I want to show you that we can actually reduce the space down to constant. And I would whiteboard it for you, but I think if that's helpful, you should try whiteboarding it yourself because in my humble opinion, this is actually very difficult to understand from a bottom up perspective, which is what I'm about to show you. I'm going to translate this into kind of a bottom up solution. We're going to start with the base case and then we're going to work our way backwards just like we usually do with dynamic programming problems so kind of like this we'll have initially our result like this is the person that we're going to return this is the person that we're currently at or i guess you could think of it as the index right so we start at index zero of course and we're going to return the index plus one this is the part that might be unintuitive because it's kind of bottom up so for people in range one which is the base case that's what we're starting with all the way up until and including n so therefore we put n plus one here and then down here i'm going to actually use the code below to kind of write the formula here which again is just kind of working our way backwards so here you can see that from the return value from that zero what we did to it is we added k to it okay so i'm going to take our result our index and add k to it and then we modded it by n this is the easy mistake to make you might think okay so the result should just be reassigned to this and mod it by n but no remember in the recursive solution n is changing so that's why we have this variable that i called people because it tells us when we have one person remaining this is what we're going to do and when we have two people etc cetera, etc cetera. so here instead of having n i'm going to mod this by the number of people remaining so i hope it was relatively straightforward how we translated this into a bottom-up solution i think drawing this out honestly doesn't make it easier to understand but maybe you'll disagree so i'll go ahead and run it and you can see this is also just as efficient, but we do kind of save space this time. I have to say this is genuinely one of the most difficult problems to explain. I hope I did a decent job. Please let me know. And if you feel like you found a different resource that explained it better than me, please let me know so that I can kind of learn from that. But I genuinely feel like this is insanely difficult to explain. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.